Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So... If you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Seriously, I want to say thank you to all of our Patreon supporters out there. I know you guys uh, have been following us for a while, but this is the very first podcast after we hit our Patreon goal for the podcast. Woo! So now this podcast is weekly, and every single week we're going to be trying to bring on guests. Speaking of guests, we have Mr. HMK with us today. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm I'm so glad to be back on board with this podcast, and I'm ready to talk about some really cool Nintendo stuff that's been happening the last few months and for this month as well. Yes, we have some awesome topics for you today, and I am also joined, as always, by Mr. Eric Moore. How's it going, everybody? And we're going to try a little something different with this podcast, as we're now making it weekly a lot more structured, um, and I'm going to try not to talk over people. Yes, I hear you guys' feedback. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's just hop right into it. We, we have some awesome topics. Uh, the first topic we're going to talk about this week, uh, we're over six months away from the Switch releasing, right? So a half year mark, a little past that, and I, I want to kind of take a moment for us to reminisce on, you know, the Switch so far and uh, how it got here. It's obviously been a success uh, so far. And kind of look at why we think it got here and what were some of our favorite games or moments for the Switch for the past six months. And then uh, what we're kind of looking forward to as we head into 2018. Because I think, obviously, all three of us are really looking forward to Mario Odyssey. Um, but we have a topic specific about Mario Odyssey later, so we'll gush about that <laughs> a little bit later in the podcast. So little tease. Um, so, well, I guess we'll just start with our guest, HMK. How do you think the, the Switch is doing and how it got to where it is today? You know, I I think the Switch is doing extremely well, especially after the failure and the catastrophe that was the Wii U. Um, You know, Nintendo, it it really seems that Nintendo decided to cut and run uh, at one point during the Wii U's development, or not even development, but during its lifespan, right? Uh, They already got us hyped up for the next system, the Nintendo NX, when it was called that way back when. And um, since the, the Switch has come out and we're past six months of it being out and about, they haven't disappointed. You know, Nintendo is back on top in terms of, you know, getting those consoles out, constantly being out of stock, that huge demand. And now we're at a point where we're getting it like AAA or otherwise really good games back to back to back every month on the month. You know, we started out with Breath of the Wild uh, with the launch of the Switch. Then we got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Then we got ARMS, Splatoon 2, Pokemon DX. And we're going to get Super Mario Odyssey this month. And then next month, we're, um, oh, I, 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 to, um, to be mistaken, uh, December, we're getting Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And that's a huge game. I, you know, that these are games that I would never have expected to be released within the same year, especially the next big Zelda and Mario games. You know, um, they're doing a lot of things right with the Switch. I, that's why I feel like it's been a bigger success than uh, what, than the Wii U ever was. You know, I feel like the, they put their they put too many uh, eggs in the basket that was the Wii U. They relied so much on, hey guys, this is a console for you hardcore gamers, and like here, here's New Super Mario Bros. You, this is gonna sell a lot of consoles because New Super Mario Bros. games always sell well, which they do. But then they learn the hard way. That's not, you know, that's not everything that goes into promotion uh, and what goes into good content for a video game console. The Switch got all of that right within the first month. They told us what the Switch uh, was from January. They hyped us up. They let us know what it was, what it can do. The first game to come out that the big AAA title was Breath of the Wall, which added so much buy value to the Switch. And they kept releasing great games, great accessible games, multiplayer games, online games, 
every month on the month. So Nintendo was very smart on handling uh, the Switch. And uh, even though they brought back games that were on the Wii U, like uh, Mario, Kart 8, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Pokemon Tournament Deluxe, they brought, uh, they brought in better versions of those games and games that can truly thrive on a system that has a future, in my opinion, Otherwise, uh, like, you know, save for the Wii U. That's why I'm really waiting for, like, Super Smash Brothers uh, for Nintendo Switch. A lot of people are saying that, oh, let's get a new Smash Brothers game. I wouldn't be mad if it was just a port with a couple of new features added in. Because with the Switch, games can truly thrive when they couldn't on the Wii U. So that's what I think. I think the Switch is doing extremely well. Nintendo knows what they're doing to make it do extremely well. And I'm really excited to see what goes on into to, to, uh, to 2018. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know how you, you explain it better than that, <laughs> really. <laughs> I mean, what's even crazy to add on top of that is some of the third-party support it's been getting now. Uh, you know, yeah, everyone's been talking about Doom lately because that's, you know, maybe technologically one of the biggest announcements for the system. That uh, was so crazy when they announced Doom and Wolfenstein 2. I'm like, <laughs> you guys have to be kidding. <laughs> right? I could not believe it. Like, I, Rocket League, okay, got it. Minecraft, obviously. Crossplay, hey, great, cool. I'm glad you're on board. Uh, Doom? Wait, wait. <laughs> wait, we're, we're talking about the same game that you rip guts and blood out of everything, right? Right? Nintendo wanted that? They went to your studio and asked wait, you? Wait, wait, wait. I thought this was a family console. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, everything's for kids. Yeah, right, that's right. That's what yeah. Nintendo is. Right. Um, you know, but... <sighs> It's it's really interesting to me just looking at this year. The the only caveat, I, you know, like HMK, you just mentioned a whole bunch of reasons that it succeeded. A, a big reason being the library. Mm -hmm. uh, just an insane launch year. This might be the best launch year for exclusive titles on a single platform maybe ever. Uh, just in terms mm -hmm. of not maybe not sheer number of titles, but the sheer uh, how big those titles were and how consistently they have been releasing. I mean, we're talking about this now, and we still have Mario Odyssey to come. We still have a, a massive JRPG in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We didn't even mention Fire Emblem Warriors is still coming. Yeah. Uh, there are so many big exclusive titles still coming this year, and we've already got you know more than a handful that have hit and have sold well um, and have helped keep the Switch sold out until recently, of course. Yeah, uh, but still, I mean, it's it's been how, you know, over six months, and, you know, there's still... I mean, they're barely sitting in stores. Sure. It's not like they're. It's not like you can go walk in and see like twenty or thirty sitting on the shelves. And well, some places maybe. Um, the thing is, like, what, what let me know that they caught up with stock. Obviously, is Amazon. They have yeah. both versions have been available on Amazon all this past week, uh, which means yeah, they're they're obviously catching up with stock. You know, there was a new report out there. We talked about it about how maybe they're producing two million units per month, possibly at this point. Who knows? Like, they obviously have to prepare for the holiday season and uh, you know catch up with demand. So one thing I thought was interesting, you know, HMK, you mentioned Smash. Man, <laughs> I'm scared for Smash. Like, on one hand, I, I would love for it to be like a Wii U port that brings in all the 3DS stuff and adds a couple new characters like Ice Climbers or whatever. On the other hand, there's obviously the, the counter argument that you know a new Smash game has to come eventually. Uh, whether it's on Switch or whatever comes next. And it feels weird to even whatever comes next. Switch, yeah, right? Switch hasn't been out long enough to talk about what's next, has it? Right. Um, right. But I believe, I, I could be wrong, but I believe Sakurai is officially done with Smash. Uh, uh, you know, with, with, the, with the thing with Sakurai, you know, like, I understand why he thinks and why he says that he's done, but he said he was done before. Yeah, but you know? before, I, I, at least I got the impression based on how he talked in the Fem because he said that weekly column in the Femitsu, um, based on how he worded things, it sounded like he was mostly staying on as a favor to Iwata because they came up together in the industry. Um, and Iwata, it largely, like the reason we even have Smash is because of Iwata. Um, so I feel like as much as he kept saying he's done with Smash before, he had a strong reason to keep doing it um, as a favor to Iwata, and I'm sure Nintendo was tossing plenty of money his way. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure money was not a problem to convince him. But uh, I, I honestly think he's at that point now where Iwata's gone. Um, he might feel like he's created the best Smash game he possibly can. Uh, we know it's painful for him to develop the game because he is so meticulous, he wants to make sure every character is balanced himself. 
We know what that's done to his hands over the years. Not good. Um, and I think he's ready to make his own game. And he doesn't actually work for Nintendo, so he has no obligation to continue to work for Nintendo. Uh, just, right. just my take. Just my. Obviously, we don't know because we haven't heard anything about Smash at all since they got done with the DLC. Right, right. Um, so I, I'm a little worried about Smash. Not so much like this generation. As you said, they could just port the old one because it was on a console that didn't sell well. Even though, you know, I think the only hesitancy is that it was also on 3DS. Uh, and 3DS obviously sold well. So th- there's that whole, do we bring it over even though we have a version of it that sold well? Uh, I-, I don't know what their thought process would be there. But, you know, just like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it's going to sell well. Uh, yeah. It's Switch. I mean, let's be honest, Smash and HD on a popular system is probably going to sell well with Smash Bros. Uh, but the reason I bring that up is because as amazing as this year has been, I mean, I, I could not have ever expected a year like this. Man, I, I'm i actually a little worried for 2018. Mm-hmm. I was How do you follow the same this thing. year up? I you mean, follow we, it up with Smash. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> oh, hey, there you go. I mean, yeah, but Smash, it's a, Smash isn't going to, it doesn't equate to Mario Kart, Zelda, and Mario, especially when Zelda was like one of the most groundbreaking or at least influential Zelda games since Ocarina of Time. Then you have Mario, which looks like it might be the most influential Mario game since Super Mario 64. And then you have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which, again, it's a port of a Wii U game, but it's widely considered to be the best Mario Kart game to ever exist. So it's like you have three of potentially some of your best games you've ever made in some of your biggest franchises. Smash, no matter how good it is, it isn't going to make up for all of that. And, I, I mean, you could argue maybe, you know, because they did announce Pokemon and Metroid. Um I just don't think those titles are even coming in 2018. I think if they had those two with Smash and they spread them out throughout the year, that'd be that'd be great because then they can mix in their other games like Yoshi and Kirby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, I think they have a new brand new Fire Emblem game coming. Uh, obviously, an Animal Crossing would be a huge announcement for Switch, yeah. and that would take off really huge in Japan because they love using Switch in portable mode. Uh, but at the same time, from what we know right now, anyways, I know we're not even at 2018, right? We still have E3 to come. We still have the Game Awards. Nintendo usually does something big at the Game Awards every year. Uh, there could be announcements coming. There's going to be announcements coming. But I I do worry that Nintendo put all their eggs in this launch year, and now we got to wait two years before they have another year like this. Yeah. You know, is. I, I want to that, – that's very – you know, it, it's very logical to think that way. Um, because you know, you know, game development and what we've seen before in history tends to repeat itself. But you know, some I feel something within Nintendo's infrastructure clicked when you know Kimishima just sat in that chair and then he's like, "Okay, we're not playing games no more." You know, so like you know, as you said before, a year like this was unprecedented. How unprecedented would it be for them to continue to to try and continue the streak into 2018? So this year, like you said, we got Mario Kart, we got a Pokemon Fighter. We got a new Zelda uh, game. We got Zelda. We got Mario Odyssey. We got all these great games. Split uh, a sequel to Splatoon, a new IP in Arms. You know, mm-hmm. we do know for a fact that next year we're getting three big titles in Kirby, Yoshi, and Fire Emblem. I want to, you know, uh, it's you know, I think it's safe to say that Metroid and Pokemon is on that gray area if it's coming out 2018 or maybe 2019. Yeah, either whatever it's gonna be. The, the, yeah. the grounds for that. Like, yeah. if we see a huge gameplay for either one of those titles, then there you go. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, could you imagine, like, this year, we all, all the stuff we got this year, the next year, we get Fire Emblem, we get Pokemon, we get Kirby, we get Yoshi, we get Metroid all on the Switch in 2018, and then, you know, the cherry on top is, like, Smash. And then, like, my, my argument with Smash, because that's only, like, what you said about Sakurai, and then, you know, when we get a new Smash game and Sakurai come back... I feel that the, the the biggest reason why I think why Smash will come back in 2018 as a port from the Weavers is that one, it doesn't have to stress uh, Sakurai out. You know, if they're gonna get new characters, he can come back and work just work not as much as he did originally on Smash Four uh, for those DLC characters. He can have Bando Namkai. Um, Bando, I keep saying Bando Namkai. Bando. I'm, yeah. yeah. I met Namco Andrew Bandai. Uh, they can oversee the development of this port for the Switch, and then that could be something that could take the stress off your wallet. And remember, Nintendo really, and I mean really, wants to get on the esports uh, money train. Mm-hmm. They really want to jump on esports. They've shown up with ARMS, and even though ARMS, you know, it had a great launch, 
Like I, I hardly see any play by play arms. I'm not saying it's a bad game. It's just no, you know no, no one plays arms. You know, um, but people are playing Splatoon, and then Nintendo's really trying to get into the esports league thing with yeah. Splatoon. I, and that confuses yeah, me. It confuses me that they're doing that because until they start offering cash prizes, it's not serious. Mm-hmm. Right. That, I mean, think. I mean, League of Legends and all these other esports—they're <laughs> giving away millions of dollars at global tournaments, <laughs> and Nintendo's like, "We'll give you a belt." Oh, let me, <laughs> let me throw a caveat on that. Cash prizes that are actually there. Oh, oh, because of that one. Yeah. Because of the, oh, the couple yeah. tournaments that are. That was bad, yeah. Yeah. But that, that that yeah. Definitely if you guys don't know, uh, I think we did a podcast topic uh-huh. on that before, so I'll try to throw a link to that on the YouTube video. But, yeah, it's uh, that's the only thing I worry about is I love the esports scene. I think it is legit. I think it's oh, massively yeah. popular, and I get it. I mean, why do people love watching people live stream games? Like, watch me live stream. They like watching professionals go at it and play games they love to the highest possible level. It's just the same reason that, like, sports fans like watching yeah. sports. Yep. Watching athletes at the highest possible level play a sport we love and doing it in impossible things is awesome. Um, and I, it felt weird to me that Nintendo was pushing esports while not being willing to financially back esports. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, you have like the Smash community trying to get Nintendo to even recognize them. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we'll bring you out and have you at a tournament you know, before E3, but uh, we're still not going to really reckon. We'll, we'll allow you to run your tournaments. Yeah. Basically. It's almost like their YouTube policies. We'll allow you yeah, right. to, to use <laughs> right. stuff, but we're not going to pay you anything. Right. Right. Um, that's what I worry about with esports in general. I... I want Nintendo to embrace esports. I think Splatoon and Arms and Smash and even Mario Kart, if they really want it to be, uh, pretty much any of their massively multiplayer games could be esports. There are people serious enough to do it, but uh, man, they got to get behind it. Even if they're running a fan, you know, like fan donation, like you donate money and it gets you a ticket and the donations go to pay for it, like whatever. At least have something that Nintendo officially supports where winners get paid. Mm-hmm. Right. And and yeah, that's my only take. Otherwise, I oh man, I would love like Splatoon Two is ripe to become oh yeah an esport oh yeah. As soon as they showed uh, when they showed off the Switch originally, and they had Splatoon Two, uh, show, you know, kind of photoshopped, I guess, or edited into an Evo setting. Oh, yeah. oh man, yeah. I'm just like, please, Nintendo. That only happens yeah. if you provide prize money. But yeah, please. <laughs> well, I mean, they almost did kind of an esports thing with with the, their tournament that they had. For they it. did, and it's really cool. Like, especially the arms tournament at E3, right? Like, oh, you got yeah. to meet the developer or meet the main guy behind it, the director, shake his hand, get an autograph, yeah. get a belt. But that's not what esports right. is like a thing right. that people do for a living. Yeah, because it's just like real sports. It takes a lot of practice, right? And if you can't oh, financially, if you can't financially support yourself doing it, you're not going to have the highest level possible competition. Right, right, and I know right away you're not going to have sponsors like oh, you know yeah. some of these guys are. Yeah, so yeah, you that, have to that, find that's ways how to the support melee yourself. Community. Some of them survive because they have some sponsors. Mm-hmm. Because for some reason, melee just stays popular at <laughs> fighting tournaments. Oh, yeah. uh, Smash Four has picked up some steam, but it, it's. Uh, I don't know. I would love for Nintendo to truly embrace it, just like I would love for them to truly embrace a real account system yeah. and real online features and an ability to message my friends uh, on Switch. Yeah. Uh, but you mean voice chat actually on Switch? Yeah. To, to turn this back around to uh, to the instead of talking so much about the future of Switch, because like it's unknown, right? We don't know what's going to happen in 2018, and I think one positive thing in Nintendo's favor, and this is just something I assume they're doing. Uh, is having basically all of their in-house games releasing on Switch. Uh, I don't think they're really developing much in-house for 3DS. Mm-hmm. Um, like Metroid Samus Returns, and they have, you know they have a new Pokemon game coming this year, but then they have a, a Pokemon game coming, uh, you know, for Switch as well. And we know Game Freak's working on that. Um, it, it's we reached a situation where I think once they combine their development teams, and now they have a system that combines handheld and home console together. I think. The one aspect is that you're not going to have to worry about, oh, is the next Animal Crossing coming to 3DS or Switch? I, oh, is there any doubt it's coming to Switch? Yeah. You know, that like, that's a massive game. I mean, my, my concern with 2018 was obviously, like, out of all the games that, that HMK listed off for, for 2018, uh, even throwing Metroid in there, 
none of them are big sellers but Pokemon. Right, and none of them are your actual big, big titles. Yeah, a lot of those are more like niche franchises. Like, yeah. even, I hate saying that about Metroid Prime. Oh my yeah. god, it hurts me. <laughs> it hurts me, but Metroid's always been a niche franchise. I mean, some of its best-selling games only moved 2 million units. I mean, day one, Mario Kart 8 destroyed that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so it's like that's what I mean. Like they had all these big hitting titles this year, and it's like, well, if they get Pokemon in the next year, that's great. But there isn't really another Smash. Is kind of it, it's weird. Nintendo has a lot of niche titles, and then they have like five huge franchise right. titles. Um. So, but that's the thing. Like I think Animal Crossing is actually at the level of of a big seller. If you look at the sales numbers of New Leaf, mm-hmm. ooh, ooh, and I think people are ready. I think they've been ready for a while. Uh, that Amiibo Festival stuff and whatever they're doing on their phone. Uh, stop. Just give us a real <laughs> Animal Crossing game. Come on. Uh, but but turning the conversation back around to what, like this year and the success, we talked a lot about games. Games, games, games. But what about the system itself? Because I'm of a belief that you can have a fantastic lineup of games, but if people don't like the hardware, it's really not going to matter. I feel like that was also mm-hmm. part of the issue with Wii U. Yes, Wii U also had a game issue. Like, I feel like this year almost equaled the output of Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It really did. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and that's not a disc- Like, there's a lot of games on Wii U that I still would love to support it, and that's going to be a topic for another podcast. But I really, uh, the hardware itself, like, the naming convention, just so brilliant. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, it's in your face. You know, it's not. <laughs> It's not a thinker. Like, Xbox isn't necessarily in your face about it being a gaming machine, even though Extreme Box, whatever. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation, <laughs> you know, you play, but okay. Uh, you know, we, we, we was like, well, okay, well, what does that even mean? It's, it's yeah. a made-up word. Yeah. Um, you know, Nintendo 64 was all about the graphics, and it, you, you look at all the history of the gaming conventions, and then all of a sudden you get the Switch, and it's quite literally telling you what the system is. Almost, I mean, it's just like 3DS, a 3D DS. Yeah. Um, but I think that was a smart move. I didn't like the naming convention with 3DS uh, because I, I wondered at the time if people would just say, oh, it's just like another new Nintendo DS or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but whatever, it ended up working out for them after they massive price cut. <laughs> yeah, that launch price, yeah, yeah. 250 Yeah, yeah disgusting. Uh, ouch. And, and it's not even that it was 250 at launch. It No games. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. no big hitting games at launch, and that's kind of—I mean, that that gets back to obviously Switch. We, we had Zelda, which was obviously maybe the best launch title ever. Um, you know, Mario sixty four obviously yeah. is going to make a strong argument because there was like no games on the sixty four, but Mario sixty four. No, well, yeah, but <laughs> theoretically, Breath of the Wild was pretty much the only game on Switch too. So, well, Street Fighter uh, four or no, sorry, two that sold really well. Um, and then we got Mario Kart 8 like a month later. So like it, that was yeah. the thing. Switch had these consistent big releases. Oh, right, right, right. But um, like Golf right, Story, Golf Story, Golf Story. Right away at the beginning though, it was pretty much Breath of the Wild and Any excuse Breath me. of the Wild. Yeah. <laughs> so. But uh, that hardware, man, the Switch name, the, yep. the novelty of on the go and at home. I mean, it's not something that people haven't tried before. Uh, they just failed at it. You know, you had Vita and PSP, you know, being able to stream games from the system, but there's obviously issues about streaming games from the system. Now you're throwing in the moniker of you have to rely on internet connections and Mm -hmm. routers, and if you're not in the same home, then you really got to rely on some really good stuff. You know, you're at a hotel, (laughs) good luck streaming your PlayStation 4 games. Yeah. Jeez. It doesn't work. I mean, it it will. It'll stutter like crazy. (laughs) I've I've done it. It's not... It's not playable. And then in Nintendo, you just take it out and go. Yep. Just make sure you bring a power cord to plug it in and charge it. Yep. Um, just so convenient. And, and e- everything about it seems like Nintendo listened to everything. I mean, they somehow brought back motion controls when everyone wanted them to ditch motion controls and nobody cares. Yeah. How? How, how am I able to still play Just Dance 2018 with full motion controls, using the Joy-Cons, just like Wiimotes, and nobody cares. <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> found not, a way to make not... it not care. Yeah. yeah. Like, the brilliance in that design where they're still going to have the motion controls for games like Just Dance and stuff that people wanted, but they realized that's not necessarily, like, the appeal. And I was worried, too. Like, when they did the one presentation, yeah. they were showing up HD Rumble. Oh, you can feel the ice cubes. You can do that. <laughs> I'm like, that's really, really cool, and I think HD Rumble, when it's used well, is fantastic. But... Obviously, those are not why people are buying your system. No. 
Um, so the fact that they packed like a full controller, you know, obviously analog triggers aside, I know there's people who really want those. Um, they packed a full controller and a portable device that has all these multiple ways to use the controllers. And I, I think even the, taking the Joy-Cons off and playing them sideways, my kids have done that and played some Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've even done it, and it, it actually worked out better than, you know, people always, oh, you get cramped. I'm like, it really wasn't that bad. This yeah, is no. something I'm going to do for five hours straight. No, but in portable mode, my Switch doesn't last five hours. Yeah. So. Nope. <laughs> so that's not really a problem. Plus, it's really nice. Like, oh, my pro controller's dead. Well, I can, I can just take my Switch and take off the controllers and play some multiplayer. Um, and obviously, it's not ideal for every game. Every Some games, you get less controls and blah, blah, blah. But I, I just think the Switch, just everything seems carefully planned out on it. I think mm-hmm. the only the only flub is the kickstand. Yeah. Um, not so much, you know. I know some people say, "Oh, it's flimsy." Uh, it's not so much that to me. It's that it's just poorly located. They could have had two of them. That would have fixed a lot of problems. Or just like one big one, uh, like or right in the middle. Right, yeah, one big one in the middle would have uh, been nice. But I mean, whatever. It's such a minor. I mean, it works for it. It's just I know some people who have taken on a plane and like planes have turbulence and it yeah. just falls right over. Yeah. Right. But whatever. I mean, it's such a minor complaint. No one's going to be like, oh, I'm not buying the Switch because the kickstand sucks. Oh, right. Um, hmm. you, you also got to bring up the Switch bend. Oh, the bending. The bending. And the... Uh, the dock. The dock scratching. Yeah. And the... Dock uh, was poorly designed. And the... Uh, why can I not think of it? Correction. The, Dock was not poorly designed. It just, they, poorly all they had to add was some like some little pads. Yeah, spacers. Like little spacers or like little felt like strips. Like that's the things that everyone's doing in their switch. Yeah. And I feel like because they're using the plastic screen, I would it would have been nice. I don't expect this, but some phones do it now. Include a glass protector for your switch. Right. Right. Um, not that they're they're like five bucks or under. They're not that expensive, but yeah. still, it's kind of like it's a plastic screen, easy to scratch. Yeah. And and then the Joy-Con being on oh, the left, the, the yep. left joy con thing yeah. yeah i mean as eric's bringing up there, there's there's been issues in your life yep as there is with any new hardware uh i mean i, I don't remember specific issues with the xbox outside of uh, the red ring of death no no but the xbox one this <laughs> oh, generation yeah <laughs> uh, obviously red ring <laughs> 360 of death. was red ring of death like crazy but the xbox one itself i guess its only issues were that the os was clunky and no one really knew the direction of the system um because of Microsoft's terrible, terrible, terrible messaging until Phil Spencer <laughs> took over. Just yeah. terrible messaging. Uh, PlayStation, the big issue with that was mostly the sticks. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people had issues with the thumb sticks cracking. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember that. That's, I mean, it, it's not a deal breaker. It's not broken. You know, people can go buy covers for them. But it's still, it's like you buy a new system and three weeks later, your stuff's peeling off. It's like, eh, you shouldn't have cheaped out on that. Right. Um, and they, to be fair, the new you know, they haven't done that now for years. Like all their controllers now are fine. But right, right. Um, at, at least with the Switch here, none of them were technically nothing broke the system. Yeah. The, the left Joy-Con was probably the worst. Yep. I mean, I know bend gate and bending switches look scary, but the system still worked. Right. The left Joy-Con that you could argue that's like uh, you get three feet away and suddenly you lose connectivity. We can't play games. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. And even with Ben Gate, though, it, there's, I mean, it's not like the whole thing is folding in half. It's it's slight bends. Unless you're Giant Bomb and do it on well, purpose live on stream. Oh, why would you ever do that? <laughs> oh, God. He was trying to, well, he was trying to show off, uh, oh, does it bend? Oh, yep, it bends. Oh, look, my Joy-Cons fall off. And then later on, he mm-hmm. notes, oh, by the way, I dropped my Switch and it just broke the plastic tabs. So that's <laughs> why the Joy-Cons uh, break yeah. off. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I mean... I mean that that's there's always pitfalls, uh, and this is part of the reason I always, as much as I'm I'm I'm, how do I put it? I don't follow my own advice. I always tell people don't buy systems at launch. Mm-hmm. Wait a few hmm. months to <laughs> till one you know what the issues are, and two you know yep. if they're going to be fixed. Yep. And three you know because you know what the issues are, you know if it's something you're willing to put up with. Right. Uh, and everything's under warranty, and I, at least Nintendo of America was doing a fantastic job of fixing all the problems for free. Um, and uh, most people I know that called and got their issues fixed, got their stuff back within the same week if they sent it on a Monday, which is really impressive. Yeah. Uh, usually you're not, you know, you're goodbye for your system for a couple of weeks, but they're like, nope, we have it fixed and we sent it out on Wednesday and it's back to you on Friday. Uh, and that's great. Um, Nintendo did, Nintendo of America at least did a really good job of that. But yeah, that's why I always said don't buy systems at launch. I know it's hard. This time was hard specifically because Wii U was out of production and Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah. So it's like you well, can't really buy a brand new Wii U. 
and some places don't really have many used ones anymore, and you need a switch. And oh. if you didn't pre-order the switch, yeah, you weren't right. getting yeah, exactly. Anyway. Yeah, that's um, that's the only problem with this. If up till now, if you didn't buy it basically at at launch, you're not going to get one. You weren't going to get one for yeah. a while. Yeah. So that's why it was really difficult, just because I think that game specifically is what made it like okay. Maybe I need to make an exception, but still, my general <laughs> my general advice is like even now, people think about getting the iPhone eight or the iPhone ten. Like wait, wait, you know, a few months and see what the issues are, mm-hmm. and then get it when they fix it. Or if you know it's an issue that you, doesn't bother you, um, oh, you can get an Android. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. could get an Android. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's new stuff coming out too. Uh, Google just had their their conference announcing their new Google Pixel phone. Um, Although again, they decided to go the Apple route, which upset a lot of people. No headphone jack. Why? Why? I can't even remember what their excuse was. Apple was oh, right. it's antiquated, but yet apparently, they, yeah, they're, they're trying to phase out the to, wired well, headphones. They're like stuff. they're trying to phase it out, but yet no one's offering a mass consumer option that's alternative to it. Right. It's just buy wireless, but people don't want wireless because it's batteries, and you got to remember to charge it, and you <sighs> lose them. And uh, right, right. Anyways. I'm not saying that like, if you use wireless, it's bad. Obviously, it's personal preference. Right. But uh, most consumers, yeah, just gr- go buy a five dollar pair of earbuds and you're good for. Exactly. You don't have to go out and spend seventy five dollars to buy a f- pair of wireless and headphones. And even these, to... like we're, Eric and I over here wearing headphones, it's like I can't use these without a dongle. And if I have to use a dongle and they include a dongle, that tells you that people still need the port. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. So don't get rid of it until people don't need dongles anymore. And every and the dongles they're using are converting that port into a lightning or a, a USB C or whatever. Uh, anyways, um, but yeah, I just think you know if you happened to not mind those issues or you didn't come across them like i was actually surprised at a launch unit and i never had the left joy con problem because it's something like a lot of people had it yeah. i didn't get it thankfully you I don't you don't know eric wouldn't know if he has yeah, it because he's no. never played it in anything but portable right <laughs> <laughs> so you very well could you should probably check that before the warranty runs uh, yeah probably <laughs> i could borrow you a joy con if you need to i have a pro controller right yeah now. yeah no i know um but yeah I, this first man this first six months this first year really is just amazing. Nintendo has done almost everything right. Um, the things they've gotten wrong, you know, uh, voice chat. I, I don't think there's any. I mean, I've seen a lot of people trying to defend it. I, I think you guys are just fanboys um, because I don't know how you can defend. Yeah, no. Voice chat, especially yeah. after it's already been proven, it can work locally on the system. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, there's no reason not to just have it. Uh, not be able to message friends. I'm waiting for the online system. I'm like, Nintendo hasn't given me a reason to believe they're going to get it right just because they start charging money for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's that. It's like, I think Nintendo's whole goal in releasing the app and voice chat was to try to be like, here, here's some goodwill. You know, we're going to show you we know what we're doing. But, but it, it didn't work well. Even with, even after the patch, it's like, yeah, but there's still issues. Still issues that need to be addressed. Um, and, the primary one being that I have to use a second device to voice chat. I have to use a second device for lobbies. I have to, yeah. and and even with the voice chat, you can't you can't get into just a lobby outside of a game. Uh, again, I mentioned this earlier. No way to message your friends. Um, no cloud saving. I think that's a huge one because some people who send their switches in, uh, what they end up doing is just giving you a brand new unit and you lose all your data. Yeah, lose all your saved data. Yeah. You can recover your digital games. But you lose your save data. So it's like, yeah, now yeah. it's nice. Games are tied to your account, but save data is still tied to the system. Um, so th- they have some work to do there. They also have work to do with like universal account systems and uh, trying to use your account on multiple switches. Uh, th- there's some some issues to work out. But the thing is, a lot of it's just kind of flown under the radar because what are the headlines? Switch is selling out. Oh, Switch just hit 70,000 sales last week in Japan. Mario Odyssey is coming. looks yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Splatoon is great. Oh, my gosh. Look at these sales numbers. Third-party games are coming. Like All this good news is, is kind of drowning out to be like, yeah, there's still an underbelly there where things aren't quite there. But Just as long as they don't forget about them. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it's something that they can get away with now. Yep. Long haul, I don't know if they can. But for now, while there's enough good content coming out to distract everyone, sure. Um, so, yeah, it was a great first year. I guess the general message is this is like the best launch year ever for a Nintendo platform, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, this is maybe even the best launch year ever for any platform. 
you know, just taking all of them into consideration and the game releases and the novelty of the device and the attractiveness of it and everything they've done has been so perfect. Just remember, folks, there's still issues and we hope they just get fixed over time. We hope. Mm -hmm. We need yeah. to keep reminding Nintendo the issues exist. Yeah. You know, we can't just tell them that we accept this because all the games are so great. Like, yeah, we can have our cake and eat it too. Yeah. Because everyone else gives us the cake. Except for when the cake Except is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man.